I now want to introduce our presenter, Dr. Gerald Crocker. The Safe Start Center has worked with Dr. Crocker many times, and we are very pleased to have him with us today. Dr. Gerald Crocker is an independent consultant who specializes in systems reform initiatives that seek to improve outcomes for children, youth, and families. He has provided technical assistance, training, evaluation, and research support for major comprehensive community initiatives from the local to the national level. His areas of expertise include small and large group facilitation, community engagement and capacity building, the design of collaborative planning processes, program evaluation, fiscal analysis, and the development of government structures to support community initiatives. He is previously the Assistant Director of Community Services for the National Civic League, Managing Associate at the Association for the Study and Development of Community, uh, Senior Associate at the Financial Project, and is currently adjunct faculty at George Mason University School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution. He holds a doctor doctoral degree in conflict resolution from George Mason University. Thank you and welcome, Dr. Crocker. Thanks, Andrew. You're welcome. All right. Uh, should I just go ahead and jump in? Yeah, I, I just I do want to want to pause and see um, if anyone that especially the people that just joined if they can hear okay or you we can we can hear you if you unmute your phone and, and uh, we welcome welcome that so uh, please if, if anybody wants to have any questions uh, feel free to ask but yes go ahead Gerald we're we're all ears. All right, excellent. Well, uh, welcome to everybody, and uh, looking forward to talking with you about uh, financing strategies and taking a general strategic approach uh, to financing your initiatives. Um, and again, as Andrew said, because we're um, a, a smaller group, please feel more than free to ask me questions um, during the, the presentation because I think that will just simply add to the discussion. And we're also covering a, a fair amount of ground with some complex issues. So I think it's helpful to uh, take some time if folks have questions as they arise to, to process them then instead of uh, waiting until the very end of things. So um, to begin, uh, I think as all of you are probably well aware, one of the greatest uh, funding challenges um, for your initiatives is that because the issue of children exposed to violence cuts across so many different issue areas, um, so many different types of services and service providers and stakeholders, um, it can be a challenge uh, to take an integrative, comprehensive approach um, and also to identify specific sources of funding uh, to support your initiative because they're often embedded in other types of services and programs. So what I want you to take away uh, from this webinar are three uh, big picture ideas. Um, the first is what it means to take a, a strategic approach to financing your initiatives as opposed to uh, a more typical program-based uh, financing approach or developing a, a program budget. What does it mean to approach the financing of your initiatives in a strategic manner? Um, secondly, I'll discuss in a, in a decent amount of detail specific uh, financing strategies that you can use to support your initiative. And again, we're going to cover a, a significant amount of ground today, and so that does limit uh, at least some of the detail we can get into, but I want to assure you that um, we will follow up uh, with resources and publications that go into much greater detail about specific uh, strategies, funding sources, um, and uh, case studies of other initiatives that have worked with uh, children exposed to violence, child traumatic stress, and related issues. So you'll be able to access all those documents, and you can also follow up uh, with either myself um, or, uh, or Elena if you have additional questions, but I just want to assure you that those resources uh, will be available. Um, the third objective um, is to uh, emphasize to you the importance of developing a strategic financing plan for your initiatives. And I want to emphasize that this is not required uh, by the grant, the process that I'm going to describe and its components, um, but it is my advice to you as, the consult uh, you know, as a consultant uh, that this is uh, an important way to think about how you finance your initiatives um, and, and also gives you a template to think more strategically 
strategically about how you're going to approach the work. Uh, and, and I think it's and I'll explain the difference between a standard budget and a strategic financing plan, and we'll uh, go into a little bit more detail about how you create one. And so I see we've got the first slide up, and the first slide provides you with a basic checklist of how to think strategically about sustaining your initiatives. So we'll go through uh, each of these principles, and we'll primarily discuss uh, the first two objectives. So what does it mean to take a strategic approach to financing? And we'll cover five specific financing strategies that you can use uh, with some examples from other communities along the way. And then we'll conclude with a discussion of how you put together a strategic financing plan. Um, Andrew, how do I advance the slides? Yeah, just um, that, the, try to write. There we um, go. There we go. Oh, do you got it? Slight technical difficulty. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, to start out uh, with your initiative's vision and mission, and I know um, uh, most of you, if not all of you, are in the process of defining your vision and mission. And one of the things that I've seen in other community initiatives uh, around kids and families policies um, is that vision and mission statements are often developed in a pro forma way, um, that you develop them at the start of the initiative, uh, and then it's relatively rare uh, to revisit them or use them to guide the initiative. And I think that that's a big mistake, and there are two critical things that I want folks to remember about the connections between your vision and missions and how you finance your initiative. All right, and the first is, is a big picture point, and that's that your vision is what you want to sustain. And I think uh, especially since many of the folks working uh, on these types of initiatives work in public agencies or uh, nonprofit service providers, um, there's a temptation to think in terms of programs and strategies uh, when it comes to what you think about what you're going to sustain. And obviously that's an important component of the work, uh, but thinking that way, or at least you using that as your primary lens to think about financing and sustainability uh, tends to make you inflexible. Now obviously the needs of your initiative are going to change over time. The availability of funding is going to change over time. Uh, and so you have to be able to, to adapt, um, but also remember that it's your vision that you're trying to achieve, um, and the programs and strategies are simply means to that end. And I think you become inflexible if you get trapped in programmatic or service-based thinking. And so uh, making sure you revisit your vision and mission I, I think is really important um, to, to keep you focused on uh, the outcomes that you're trying to achieve and a long-term sustainability strategy. Um, the second thing that I think is critically important about your vision and mission as it relates to financing your initiative is it forces you to confront questions of scale, scope, and sustainability. And uh, one example that I think is very helpful uh, to, to show how you use a vision and mission uh, to connect with those issues uh, is the Urban Health Initiative's denominator exercise. And the Urban Health Initiative um, was a, a major um, initiative funded by the Robert Wood Johnson uh, Foundation that was focused on um, uh, community health more broadly, but uh, most of the sites, if not all of them, focused on uh, violence and children issues. So it's fairly connected to your work, and part of the materials that I'll, send, uh, that I'll make available are lessons learned from that initiative that I think are very applicable to the work that all of you are doing. And uh, the Urban Health Initiative started out by asking the sites to do what was called a uh, denominator exercise. And so in this case, uh, the denominator were, uh, was how many youth are affected by the different problems that the sites were trying to address. And the numerator is how many youth will be affected by the strategy that you're pursuing. And then what the sites had to look at was that of those youth affected by the problem, how many will their specific strategies reach? And again, they would use uh, data from evidence-based practices uh, and their own strategic plans to estimate how many youth they were going to, to reach. 